my talk is a little bit different. Mine's more about nuts and bolts. And like Lee, I've taught uh, my course for a long time and I've had some experiences. And I think the main thing is that I've learned is that you have to be super specific with the students. And I am actually, I haven't used rubrics before, but I, I'm definitely gonna incorporate that. Um, and I was trained this to be with, uh, by my major professor to write with precision, economy, and clarity. I, hopefully I trained Darrell that way also. <laughs> but, <Presbyterian>. yes. <laughs> um, and as when I was a PhD student, um, my very last semester I took a poetry class to diversify myself or to, to distract myself. And my, um, the guy who taught the course said to me, now I know why scientists don't write because they shouldn't. Um, <laughs> because we write so differently. And I think that that's a problem with um, students. So one of the things I do right away is explain the importance of science writing and communication of ideas. And that um, I've tried various methods of letting them write in the style of their discipline and um, being very frustrated with the diversity of styles and realizing that I simply didn't have the experience to be able to critique in a discipline other than my own. So um, I talk about the, um, the importance of science communication in initially and in, in why um, they need to understand science because, of course, science literacy is such an important issue. So the course um, is Evolution for Non-Majors. Uh, it's been a GE course for a long time. It's changed just a little bit to fit uh, the new diversity pathway. And among the slows um, include understanding biological diversity, um, understanding writing and essays and on the exams, and then tying the role of evolution and biodiversity into sustainability, which is a major goal of the pathway. So uh, like Lee, I do an introductory assignment. Um, and this one is just an essay. It's a short essay. It's for a couple purposes. It's for them to get an idea on how I'm going to grade them. Um, likely, I have them turn in a draft. Um, I critique it and then turn it back and then they turn it back. Um, I don't uh, have students critique, although I, I think that I, I should consider that. So this one um, is just an essay. It gives me an idea about their basic abilities. And then there are two papers um, after that one is the biological basis of an evolutionary trait. Um, it's five pages. I used to do one paper of 10 pages, but um, because of the um, draft nature, I've changed it to two papers of five pages. And I found that one of the things, um, in my majors class, I teach evolution for majors also. Uh, they have to cite from the primary literature only, in this class, they only have to have one from the primary literature and then uh, the rest from secondary literature. Um, and then another paper uh, that's a little broader. So one's based on biological basis of evolution, some aspect of evolution. And the next one is the role of evolution in society. Pretty broad. The only thing I don't allow them to talk about is creationism, which is just not appropriate for that course. Um, and I have also found that um, students don't really understand the structure of a paper. And uh, they just sit down the night before and do a stream of consciousness thing, and, and it's pretty obvious. So I ex think it's really important to explain what, um, what a literature review is and what components are that they need, uh, again, like Lee, to do a literature search. Um, they can use the research station or, or any other um, aspect. Um, they have to do a, an evaluation of the data. This is pretty hard for the non-majors, and it's just why I allowed them to use the secondary literature, because they otherwise, I don't think, would get most of the primary literature. And then uh, um, I really want them to do a critique uh, it, on the particular topic. I want they, them to interpret the data and could make their own conclusions. And one thing also I've learned from experience is I used to accept a variety of different writing um, styles, uh, MLA, APA, Turabian, now I CBE only, be, again, because 
that's what we use in the sciences, or my science anyway, and um, that's, I think, uh, what I can deal with. Otherwise, I just went crazy. So um, I also explained that they, again, the basic structure, what their objectives are, um, that they have to support the work into different categories, that present a position, prevent, present the alternate position, contrast the similarities and differences, what they find, again, interpretation, critical thinking is really important in evolutionary biology, and I think as a, as a basic citizen um, skill, and I, I really emphasize that. Um, and then, again, just, just the nuts and bolts. So, and surprisingly or not, you're all teachers, you probably aren't surprised by the fact that students don't really understand even not just what a literature review is, but what an introductory paragraph is. So again, um, I do nuts and bolts stuff um, that explains, and, and I tell them that if they follow this, and this is often the way I write a paper, I'll put these headers, okay, what is my, what's my global perspective? And then I'll write a sentence, and then I'll pull those self-triggering um, um, uh, rubrics out of the paper later. So uh, that works for me, I don't know, if, uh, hopefully it works for at least some of them. And then again, just how they should focus. Um, and ultimately what this does is it makes the papers easier to read. And of course, they're, I think, better, better papers. So, and similarly, uh, the body of the literature review, they need to discuss all the uh, different aspects of their top topic. Um, one thing I've also discovered is that if you don't tell them that it's double spaced and that it's one inch margins with 12 point times New Roman, you end up with 16 point type, two inch margins. And um, I've yet to, I haven't said eight and a half by 11 paper yet. I have yet to have them turn in four by four paper with one inch margin. <laughs> And even handwritten papers, which amazes me. I, do you get that? Well, you don't because you have an online course, but I get those still if I don't say that. You get those too, right? Yeah, I know. It's crazy. Uh, um, and then again, uh, I, I've focused, I finally settled on one style guide. Um, and this part, I, I have an argument with myself constantly, and I'd love some feedback about this. Um, I, I provide this format. I, I'm always amazed how students cannot follow this. And I've gotten to be kind of persnickety about it um, because part of it's about following directions. And I think that this is an important job skill later. Um, and, but in another respect, and the argument I have with myself is this is, this is trivial. Is this important? What are your thoughts? I mean, if you say this is the format you should use in your citations, how important is that, do you think? Opinions, please. No? I think it probably multiplies there, except that I, I have to agree about the being able to follow directions. That seems to be the main goal. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah. Attention to detail. Yeah, I don't know. What do you think? I should do that. You don't think it's trivial? Too trivial? I don't think it's trivial. Yeah, but yeah. Okay. Yeah. I, I, like I said, I have that argument with myself all the time. What about I think you, Christian? Well, that's the thing. They're not. They're only using CBE. No, what I'm saying oh. Is in, in my oh, 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 right, 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 right. Right. But, right. Uh huh. Uh huh. Or, or in our field. So, yeah, that's because that's the thing. Mm -hmm. and a lot of times they leave out things like the name of the article or 
name in the yeah. journal. And or the author, I guess. That yeah, or the date. Uh -huh. and, and I will say, you know, if, if you don't have enough information for me to look it up, don't use it. So yeah. you're much looser about that. Uh, yeah, I'm less strict about, I, I want them to be consistent and follow the same pattern throughout the, for the, for the in-text citations uh -huh. at the end. Yeah, I found that that's one of the basic problems. If you don't subscribe, prescribe just one format, that you're going to get inconsistency. Yeah. Or oh, inconsistency. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, good. I, I I'll probably go back and forth on that one. And then I recommend Strunk and White. I don't know how you guys feel about that, but it, it's a good uh, reference. And then um, just general advice about paper writing. Um, sometimes this falls on deaf ears. Well, often it does, but we we try and that they need to be very clear about the argument. They need to think about it ahead of time. I like the idea of doing the, asking the questions ahead of time because that makes them actually think about it. If you don't force them to think about it, they simply won't. So um, use just basic structure. Um, and explaining scientific writing and how scientific writing is different. Um, one thing that I found, uh, I don't know about your fields, but in my field, we always write in first person now uh, or neutral voice. And some of the older professors teach um, third person because that's the way we used to write. Um, again, I, what I'm teaching is not writing in general, but a particular kind of writing. Um, we don't, uh, I want them to interpret, but not put emotion in. And I know that when I took the poetry class, um, that was one thing that I simply can't do because I'm not trained to do it um, is to say how it affects how this research affects my heart um, but they I, I get a lot of that where they're saying how they that affects their heart and I say no no you can't do that this is we're not um, putting um, projecting emotion we're just reporting the facts so that uh, we don't and, and we can't project emotion onto the authors either um, and just, uh, again, nuts and bolts, using technical language, don't overuse it. That's not really a problem in the non-majors class. It tends to be more of a problem in the majors class. Um, consistency in terms of pronouns and conjunctions. I'm sure this is a common problem for all of us. It's huge, actually. Um, and just, again, um, this one... This particular thing, superfluous phrases, drive me crazy. So I, I, I emphasize that, um, and then give many examples. Um, and Christian, if you, you're in writing, I'm, this is stuff uh, that you run across very often, I'm sure, which is that uh, just misuse of words and apostrophes and craziness. Um, <laughs> Yeah. That is, if you require uh -huh. uh, revision, even peer critique, uh, they'll catch that. Most of the time, you know, their peers will catch that. Okay, good. That's good to know. Um, don't be personal. I, uh, we do get some of that. Uh, the ignorant fool author, they, I said, don't do that. Uh, um, don't be tangential, which is another problem. Uh, common mistakes that I see, lots of repetitiveness. Uh, paragraph covers one topic. Three pages later, not, same paragraph, slightly uh, different um, interpretation, random thoughts, disorganization, uh, all of these common things. Um, more common things, things that they make up. Um, I wish I had some examples. Um, incorrect verbs, incorrect uh, prepositions. Um, just some examples. Examples, I think, always help. So that, uh, again, for precision economy and clarity, and um, just tightening up their writing. I, this is, I think that uh, even the students who have good writing skills tend to write with a lot of superfluous phrases. And I, I that's just, in science, we, we just can't do that for a lot of reasons. Um, and I guess uh, scientific names, I see this in the popular news a lot. So I particularly emphasize this with any students going into journalism. Um, I, it's really annoying that people don't know how to use Latin correctly. And if they're writing in the science, particularly the non-majors, um, I think it's important if you're going to report on a field to be able to uh, at least 
do basic things like write maybe a chemical formula properly or refer to a molecule properly or refer to a scientific name properly. Um, and basic things about numbers is starting, starting sentences with um, numerical representations of, uh, I mean, all of this stuff is trivia, but um, again, I think it's important as they go out into the real world, world to understand uh, a certain level of expectation in their writing at all levels, whether we're talking about general organization or the minute um, details. And so generally, um, I, these are the things that I tell them that I expect from their paper and um, that I've just covered here, which is knowing your audience, identify your purpose very clearly, um, be concise, be cor grammatically correct, and most of all, be interesting, which is hard to be interesting with all that other stuff. <laughs>